So today we're going to be discussing one of the most hated and also one of the most loved characters at the same time, Acnologia. Yes, we do know that Acnologia right now, he is the only Dragon Slayer who could turn into a dragon. And his character as a whole is just a mystery because one, we don't know about his past. I mean, we know nothing at all. And that's one of the most hyped up things. I think I can speak for the whole fandom when I say that we all want to know what went down in Acnologia's past, what made him be the guy or the dragon dragon if you want to say that he is today did he lose somebody important did the dragons do something to him that just made him like completely go crazy like i want to know what pushed acnologia to go to the limits and we also don't even know anything about his powers like his powers it's funny because he's been in the story for a while we've seen him use attacks and everything but yet we still don't know what his dragon slayer element is i know a lot of people they've been saying stuff like maybe it's water me personally i think that would be very underwhelming if acnologia just had water like what like come on that's just that just seems like water is such a simple element and for such a big villain like acting to have it i don't think that it will just be that would be way too underwhelming to me a lot of people are saying stuff like Etherno. I think that'll be dope because Etherno is one of the main things in the story that's been used a lot. We know that Natsu, he's basically has a lot of Etherno around him. E and D, Theory, it's Natsu, Drag Neil. So I can actually see the Etherno one actually coming true. But another thing that this kind of ties in with the past two is his dragon. I want to know who is acting Logia's dragon because he's a first generation dragon slayer. So we know that he was taught by a dragon. And this does kind of tie into his past, like I said. But I think that this is one of the more major things that we need to find out because hey, Acnologia, he if he did get taught by somebody, we know that the dragon slayers like Natsu or Natsu Gajio, they had their dragons go inside of them. But Acnologia, he never had his dragon go inside of him. So did he kill his dragon? Did his dragon die off? Like why didn't his dragon go inside of him? That's one thing that I want to know. Now Acnologia as a character, he's been introduced a while ago. We know that Gildar T first spoke of him. That's when we really got uh, some info on him with the whole 100 year quest, but we don't really know too much about it. We do know that with the 100 years quest, that Gildar T had to travel to Mount Zonia. A lot of people, myself included, were suspected that Acnologia's homeland. He maybe there's something sacred there that he's protecting because it said that Gildar had to go there it's not like saying that Acnologia just appeared there it's also been stated that Acnologia roams around Mount Zonia so I think that me Percy I think that when it comes to him he's protecting Mount Zonia you know what I'm saying because that might be the only thing that he has sacred to him so maybe just use it as a protection and we also find out from Zeref and Anna that they had to devise a plan in order to defeat him over 400 years ago so that shows that Acnologia he's been doing some crazy stuff in the past because if you have people like Zareph who was basically at that time he was an adult so he was a skilled magician you know he was already cursed and everything he knew black magic everything and we had Anna who was said to be the greatest celestial spirit uh made so if you have those two people having to team up in order to defeat him you know that Akinologia has been doing some crazy stuff me personally I want to know what was Akinologia like back in the day like what was his track record like did he defeat some top tiers back in the day a lot of people myself i thought i've had this theory too we thought that acnologia he was the one who killed off not to Zara's parents i mean that theory it hasn't necessarily been debunked but from what we've seen with the dragon that's kind of a little bit been debunked because the dragon doesn't look like him unless acnologia had a different design back in the day but we do know that anna and Zara, they did have to devise a plan in order to try to defeat him and then the most the most i guess say iconic part for acnologia is the tenro island situation now back in Tenro Island, we know that that was basically, the fairy tale guild members they're just trying to go there, just have a fun, little bit fun, trying to decide their next guild master but soon, little did they know that they will first have to encounter their racing say as they got there and then after they're done finding their racing say and everything, then appears Acnologia and that was just one of the most hyped up and crazy moments because even somebody like Zareph he was like, oh no, this is the Acnologia so Zareph was scared, he was shaking in his boots, like he did not want what Acnologia to show up again which kind of alludes back to the fact that Acnologia must have done something in the past to flex his strength a little bit towards Zerif and everybody else so the fact that Acnologia appeared up at Tenro Island that was crazy but 
what he did was even crazier because we saw that when he was there he basically took on everybody from the guild even people like Makarov, Lax, like everybody from the guild was attacking them they weren't really doing anything and we saw Acton Logan he tried to wipe them all out but we do know the whole them coming together holding hands that's what ended up saving them so Acton Logan he was like super strong like that was just a little tad bit of what he could do and that was one of the most hype moments that we've seen him back on Tenro Island and then we move on to the Tartarus arc whereas we know Acton Logia what he did his biggest accomplishment and this was just straight up brazy because Acton Logia killed Igneal yes this is to me personally this is still one of the most saddest moments in fairy tale because Igneal he's such a dope character I mean even though we didn't really see too much of him in real time we saw a lot of him in flashbacks Natsu would always be talking about him saying this is my dad we saw that Igneal he basically trained Natsu he taught Natsu all the fire moves he taught him how to read spell everything like he was basically father of the year for Natsu and then once we finally do get to see Igneal come out we see a little bit of interaction between him and Natsu them talking like that was so cool but at the end of the day he did have to come out we saw Neil come out versus Natsu and then or not versus Natsu but he came out of Natsu and that's basically his plan was to hide inside of Natsu for the whole time and then come out and fight Akin Logan and we know how that went down even though some people like to say that if he was struggling against a dead Igneal or I guess say a, a weakened Igneal I don't think that he was going all out because for one Akin Logan he was just like he was just they were just attacking you know what I'm saying like I don't think he was using his full power and then notice that when action logia told igneal he said all right i'm about to go serious now he really laid down the smackdown on him so action logia when he fought off against igneal that was crazy and we know that once he said he's going to get serious he actually eventually ended up killing him and that was one of the most brutal moments because like not only did he like take off his half his body but he ended up like blowing him to smithereens and the worst part about it not to watch it all so the one good thing that did that did spark the fight or that did add a little bit of more and beef towards the fight between Natsu and Acnologia. Now this part of the video is going to be a little bit more on the spoilers because this stuff hasn't really happened in the anime but it's not really too bad because I'm pretty sure that some people might have heard about some of this stuff but number one we have the encounter with Zeref and Actinologia and this to me personally chapter 436 I'll never forget this was honestly the most hyped chapter of fairy tale that I've read like this is honestly the most hyped chapter because we find out that Actinologia has a human form and that led us to think it's me personally I I was thinking to myself which form is stronger acting Loki, his human form or his dragon form we saw that his dragon form was able to take out any neo and at that time when 436 was released we didn't really know too much about his human form a lot of people they suspected that gildor's actually fought acting Loki in his human form i believe in that theory because think about it like this we know that he only really used the dragon form because he had to like fight up against the dragon and the whole thing with tenro island he couldn't get there as a human i'm pretty sure that even though acting Loki showed some of his his feet as a human he wouldn't be able to like sprint over across the ocean so i think that when it comes to using his human form he fights humans with humans and if he has to he'll fight a crowd like a group of people with the dragon form or he'll even fight a dragon with the dragon but there's no more dragons so he can't really fight another dragon but the point does still remain that during their encounter is there and Actinologia. Actinologia said I'm going to become like he's going to destroy everybody he's going to wipe everything out so that was also very hype and speaking of Actinologia's human form we know of his battle with God Serena now God Serena I'm not gonna lie a lot of people they hate the fact that he got treated me personally I'm I'm okay with the way he got treated I'm not gonna lie because we saw that God Serena he came out here and destroyed the four wizard saints like it was nothing and then we see Actinologia arriving to see yo I swear oh, I'm getting goosebumps just thinking about it I smell a dragon and then to be honest God Serena I think he would have put up a bigger fight had he not been talking and not just been boasting and saying stuff like yeah I'm about to take you out I'm about to defeat you then he ended up getting speed blitz that was funny but 
And one thing about Akin Logan, this showed that he took out me personally. I think that God Serena, he was the second strongest Dragon Slayer up until not to like lock his E and D. So basically, Akin Logan speed blitz the third strongest Dragon Slayer like it was nothing. That just shows you how strong he is and how much on a different level he is. And then we move on to Akin Logan versus Irene, in which this fight was crazy because Irene, she's not even Dragon Slayer, and yet she was pushing back Akin Logan. Uh, pushing back is uh, that's a little bit that's way too much gas she was able to hold on she was able to hold her own against Akin Logia because Akin Logia he wasn't really throwing attacks he wasn't really on the offensive it was basically Irene just using all types of magic against him but the one thing that I do gotta say is that he did seem a little bit surprised when she used her I guess they heard enchantment magic at him. He was like, whoa, this is enchantment magic? This is cool. Like, Akin Logia, he wasn't necessarily scared, but he had, like, a shocked look on his face because I guess he never seen him before. But we do know that Akin Logia, he was able to come out here, and he actually pushed Irene, who is arguably either the first, second, or third strongest Spree and 12 member to using a move that's forbidden. You know, the Universal 1 magic, or the Universal 1, I, I, I believe it's called Universal Magic. And we saw she basically used that in, she had to send Akin Logia somewhere far away. She thinks that Akin Logia is just bowling in a puddle, but I doubt that he's just going to stay in some pond. I can't wait to see Akin Logia return. Now, after describing all of his feats and telling you guys how Akin Logia basically accomplished everything, I'm going to get into a strength factor. Now, me personally, I do believe that there's a top tier list in Fairy Tale. The top tier list in Fairy Tale consists of people like Zeref, you know, Natsu, you know, Grey, you know, these people, they're top tier, but. When it comes to Akin Logia, I believe he is in a league of his own because we've seen that not too many people can just uh, hold their own against Akin Logia. When it comes to Zeref, he has to have Fairy Heart in order to become as strong as Akin Logia. That's been stated numerous times by people like August. And when it comes to Natsu, we know that he has to have, like, he has to be in his E and D form in order to be on par with Akin Logia. But there's one person who has basically been hyped up to be as strong as him, and that is Lark. K drag Neil, which is basically Zeref's son for the people who don't know, but I gotta say that once these people, if they do unlock these new form, like they're, if they do, if they can maintain their forms, then I think there's gonna be three people that can, four people that can fall to Acnologia's category, which is Acnologia, which is Natsu E&D form, Zeref with Fairy Heart, and Lord K. Now, that's basically it for this video. I do believe that Acnologia, he is the strongest person in Fairy Tale, bar none, because all of his feats and everything he's done. Comment what you guys see down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Peace out.